can be consecrations. The Lord can tell you every day, read one verse of the Bible. Read 10 chapters. That is your secret. It's not a doctrine. That's the secret of your upgrade. The Lord can tell you every week, fast twice. It's a secret. And that secret can change your life. The Lord can tell you every first week of the month, make sure you take out three days and wait upon me. It's not a doctrine. You can't teach it. If you teach it, you are in error. But if you practice it, your life will keep moving from glory to glory. People will look at you and wonder, how is this guy making it? They will make the mistake to photocopy what you are doing. Then they will end up in frustration. Because it's not about what you are doing. It's about what is powering what you are doing. And what is powering what you are doing is the information, the wisdom, and the secrets that are at your disposal. You want upgrade? You need encounters. You want upgrade? You need blessings. You want upgrade? My brothers and sisters, you need prophetic words. And you want upgrade? You need secrets, revelations, and information. I can tell you, most frustrated people are frustrated because they know nothing. Talk to them for five minutes, you will understand why they are where they are. They have no accurate information about anything. Oh, my marriage is not working. What do you know about marriage? Nothing. How many books have you read? Nothing. What did God tell you about marriage? Nothing. Oh, my business is not working. I don't know why Takoradi is so hard. What did God tell you about Takoradi? Nothing. What have you read about Takoradi? Nothing. And they think they will upgrade? Never. They can't work like that. You need to contend for secrets. Contend for revelation. You think what is happening here is happening here because God's servant smiles a lot? You smile and see the caricature you make of your life. It's beyond smiling. There are secrets. There are secrets. There are secrets. There are revelations. There are information that men work with that keeps them where they are. This is why for anybody who wants to be upgraded, there are five things you must do. And that is where we'll round up tonight. There are systems that procure upgrade, but there are things you do for those systems to respond to you. Encounters are not free. They are not cheap. God occasions them, but there are things we do on earth to receive them. Blessings are not cheap. They are channels of upgrade, but there are things we do to access them. Did you not read your Bible? Get me a summary venison. Let me eat so that my soul will bless you. It's not about talking. It's about giving you reality. I can talk a thousand times. It doesn't mean you are blessed. It's my soul that blesses. Don't you see what happened? When he blessed Jacob and he left, Esau showed up. He said, oh, your brother has deceived me. Immediately he said, I have made him your Lord. The guy wept. Is there no blessing? He said, there's no more. It's not about talking. It's not by telling you, go and prosper. It's about movements of the spirit. There are things that occasion it. For that scripture, I say, get a savory venison. But it's not only venison that occasion blessing. There are many things that occasion blessing. And if you want blessings to flow in your direction, there are things you do. If you want encounters, there are things you do. If you want prophetic words, there are things you do. If you want revelation, wisdom, there are things you do. And those are the things I will show you in the next 20, 20 minutes. Number one is prayer. Oh, my Rabbi water. Oh, in this realm, prayer changes things. Prayer, it changes things. When a man begins to pray, blessings begin to be released. When a man begins to pray, prophetic wars begin to come in his direction. When a man begins to pray, access to secrets are handed to him. And as you pray for a while, you will now discover that you don't just receive from heaven. Even the ones in you will start waking up. Because what is in you is more than what is outside you. The Bible said Christ in you is the hope of glory. He said he has put eternity in our hearts. Glory dwells on your inside. But that glory can never manifest. It takes prayer to stay it. The glory can be there, but it will be locked up. Did you not read about Jesus? Matthew 17 verse 2 and 3. He said as he prayed. He said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. It's like, it's like processing crude oil. When you carry crude oil, they call it black diamond. Because of what he has. But the crude itself does not have much value. But when you expose the crude to heat, you will discover that at different temperature, different things come out. That crude oil you see that is black, there is kerosene inside. There is petrol inside. There is naphtha inside. There is liquefied natural gas inside. But without temperature, the crude oil is just one black liquid. And you think it's nothing. And that's the problem with Africans. We don't process. We sell crude. The advanced nation don't sell crude. They buy crude and process it. That's the problem with most of you. You are looking for miracle. Miracle is in you. You are looking for glory. Glory is in you. You are looking for healing. Healing is in you. The problem is that you are not processed. So you are like African country that export crude oil and buy petrol. 
We export crude oil and buy liquefied natural gas. And the wise man is just waiting for you. Bring the crude. I know what to do with it. As you leave this conference, you will not sell crude. You will know what to do with crude. As Jesus prayed, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. Oh, when men begin to pray, glory transactions begin to take place. Those of you who understand a bit of chemistry, you know what happened. It takes you to higher level. It's like, it's like the movement of electrons. You see, the way electrons function is that they, they travel in orbit house. They move in those energy levels and they are there. But when they receive external energy, they jump to higher energy level. We call it excitation. That's what happens when you begin to pray. The realm of God is waiting for you to touch it. But it will take prayer for you to touch it. The moment you touch that realm, the energy from that realm will cause you to ascend to higher realm. And you now discover that those your eyes that only see physical things can also see spiritual things. You now discover that this your mind that only thinks about the hour of eating food can also receive wisdom for creating something. All of those possibilities are there, but you need excitation. You need processing. You need refining. What prayer does is to expose you to the refinery of the spirit. That's why when you start praying, the first thing that fights you is your flesh. You will suddenly discover that 10 minutes become 10 hours. Don't run away. Stay there. What is happening is called, is called fractionating power. Heat is being introduced. And if you stay there and you refuse to go, after a while, your flesh will struggle until your flesh will give way. And when your flesh gives way, you start hearing echoes of eternity. You start hearing whispers from Zion. You start hearing realities from yonder. Those are the things that will wake up the lion in you. You see, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. I tell my people, I say, the first gift God gives us is life. The second gift after life is hunger. That's why when a child is born, the moment the child is born, he starts crying. He's looking for something for sufficiency. You need things from the realm of God so that what is in you will wake up. That's what hunger comes to do so that you can put demand and pressure on the spirit realm. Most of us have not put pressure. Ask people who are making impact in their world. They put pressure in that realm because when you put pressure, the realm responds. In Luke 18 verse 1, he said, men ought always to pray. If you are a man, the way they know you in the spirit is that you pray. They don't define men in the spirit by ear, nose, and eye. Even goats have it. If you are a man, they say men ought, 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 always, not sometimes, always to pray and not to faint. So if you are a man and you don't pray, you will faint. And so you will not be recognized in the spirit. And the devil can ride men. He said, I've seen an abomination on the face of the earth. Princes are trekking. Why demons? I have no legality in the spirit are riding on horses. Who are those horses? They are the men who have refused to wake up to their realities. You want to upgrade? You need prayer. And you need to pray. And you will pray for a long time. When you finish exhausting your need, then you enter the real dimension of priesthood. When you find a man who walks in the realm of encounters, go and check. He's heavy on the altar. The encounters are occasioned by his hours on the altar. Anybody who does not stay in the secret place cannot access secret things. Secret things are for those who stay in the secret place. God will not shout it in the public. He whispers it to those who find him in the secret. This is why if you want encounters, if you want upgraded existence, you must factor prayer into your life. If you don't factor prayer, you can never have upgrade. And this has no regard for titles. You can be a bishop and have no encounter. The Bible said in the days of Eli, there were no open visions. The word of God was cast. Eli was a national prophet. He has nothing to do with title. He has everything to do with the man who stays on the altar. And there were no open vision. The word of God, the Lord was cast. And the young boy showed up. And the Bible said, the guy was lying on the altar. Even when the lamp has gone out, he was on the altar. Because he stayed on the altar, the heavens began to resonate. Somebody is knocking. Somebody is knocking. Because when you start praying, you discover you are journeying. You journey from asking. You ask for bread, you ask for health, you ask for house rent. After a while, you discover your list of asking is exhausted. But the prayer spirit now wakes up. You now discover prayer is beyond asking. Then you start seeking. Even you may not know what you are seeking, but your heart will begin to indict realities that are superior to you. And then you have prayed. Have you not been there? Oh, you thought it was house rent that took you to the altar. Oh Lord, we must not be disgraced. Oh Father, show up. You say we should ask, we will receive. God will allow you. When you pray for one month, then the house rent comes. Now you have implicated yourself because the realm you are hitting at, the realm has woken up. The realm will now summon you. You will now discover that this thing called prayer is beyond asking. It's for seeking and it's for knocking. A point comes where your spirit begins to desire things that are not in your realm. 
your spirit begins to perceive things that are not in your realm. That is when hunger wakes up on your inside. When you find a man who prays, he's a man of deep hunger. There is something drawing him. You discover that the, the reality of the spirit has become animated on your inside. And so you will see that prayer is beyond prayer meeting. Prayer is the spirit. That spirit is what awakens the oracles of God. If a man does not find the spirit of prayer, he can never have the things that upgrades men. In Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, the Bible spoke of Cornelius. This guy was not even born again. But he knew something about prayer. He knew something about prayer so well that the Bible said the angel appeared to him at the hour of prayer and told him, your prayers and your arms giving have ascended to heaven as a memorial. Because when men pray, their prayers are sent to heaven as incense. Revelation 5 verse 6 said the prayers of the saints. He said they are not wars alone in the spirit. He said they are sent to heaven as others. They are stored in golden vials. So the economy for trading in the spirit is the economy of prayer. And so when a man begins to pray, encounters begin to happen. When you want to enter into realms of upgrade and occasion, the things that make for upgrade, you will study. You will study. You know why the devil gives us distraction? Is to push us away from study. Many don't have stamina to study. So their spirit man is empty. The same way say men ought always to pray. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. Matthew 4 verse 4. He said, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Sometimes as you are studying, you will discover that the word of God is a gate. Those scriptures we are quoting, they are realms. Don't think scriptures are words. Those words are realms. They are realities. When you sit on the place of study and prayer, you will discover that sometimes one verse can open and it becomes a word. You will enter that word and you may live in that word for 10 years. One verse of scripture. You may run with it for a lifetime. One verse. Because those things are realms of God. They are realities of God. They are deeper than what English can articulate. And when you start studying, you put pressure on that realm to open. So you can have encounters there. You can have blessings there. You can have prophetic words from the word you are studying. That's how we occasion this thing. There is a responsibility for it. If you need upgrade, you will press for it. It's not something that just happens. It is something that is occasioned. And so as we have come to this conference, one of the things God will do for you is to put fire in your spirit to become restless. You know, Jacob told Esau, I can't bless you. There's no more blessing. But he gave him a secret that only the elders know. He said, when you become restless, you will break off this yoke off your shoulder. That means I may not have blessed you, but you can find blessing for yourself. Any day you become restless, you will force your way into blessing. And Esau did it. Although he didn't become part of the bloodline of Jesus. But if you talk about resources, when Jacob met him many years later, Jacob wanted to give him cattle and donkeys. He said, relax. This thing you have, I have them many, many, many times more than what you have. Put them aside. So a man can break yokes off his shoulder when he becomes restless. The problem with us is that there is no fire raging in our spirit. We are quick to sleep. We are quick to watch movies. We are quick to sit down and gossip. Hours that we should invest in searching for secrets. Oh. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A watchman that need not be ashamed. It says, Rightly dividing the word of truth. So when a man begins to study, he removes shame from his life. Study. It will equip you. It will equip you. That's what the word does as he upgrades you. It equips you. In Joshua 1.8, he said, This book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. He said, meditate upon it, what? Day and night. So he said, it's an activity for day and night. He said, see that you obey everything that is written therein. He said, then you do what? You make your way prosperous. He said, then you have what? Good success. So people who enjoy upgraded reality are ardent study people. First Timothy 4, 13 and 15, he said, until I come. I know you are my son in the Lord. I know I impart you. He said, but give attendance to reading. Imagine if you are a poor son in the Lord. You will have 20 pictures and hang everywhere. He said, forget pictures. Pictures is not promotion. You can snap with the biggest bishop in this, in this city, like our father in the Lord here. He won't promote you. He said, before I come, he says, study. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. He said, give thyself wholly to these things. He said, then you will make your profiting manifest to all. So there is a way to upgrade your way, your life. It's by studying. It's by praying. As you study, 
study will equip you as you study study will transfigure you we all with open faces beholding us in the glass the glory of the lord we are what we are changed so when you find men who keep looking they are changed they are changed the reason we are not being changed is because we are looking at the wrong thing because whether you like it or not you will become what you see and instead of seeing the word of god which is the glory of god most of us are seeing other things that have no bearing on our destiny so you must see you must study you must read you must be exalted if you want to upgrade that's where we access secrets that's where we glean wisdom that's the guarantee for our lives i'm not talking something you go up and come down that's not upgrade that's a jump we are talking go up and remain stable there but for you to remain stable it must be by the word because that's the only thing that can survive the test of time heaven and earth will pass away he said not one jot or tittle of my word will pass away matthew 24 35 if you want to stay stable you will stay stable by the word going forward and upward only progressively because the world keeps shooting you the world keeps shooting you the world keeps shooting you and men are looking at you and saying what's going on i'm becoming what i'm seeing i'm becoming what i'm hearing i'm becoming what i'm studying that's my reality and the point will come when you will wake up you will know where you are there used to be a time in my life where if i want to pray for the sick and i still pray don't get me wrong but if i want to pray for the sick i will lock myself up and pray for hours oh I will pray until fear will be expelled from my heart. Until I will visibly, physically feel the anointing to step out to pray. But nowadays, people call you in the night. What is happening? They say, my liver is enlarged. In the name of Jesus, return to normalcy. And they check the next day. Thank you, Lord. It has happened. You have been upgraded. You, it's not feeling. It's reality. And some of you, you'll be upgraded. You'll be driving. You'll be receiving inspiration. Sometimes you have to pack your car and write it quick. Because you have entered that realm. The thing comes to you. Even when you are sleeping, you are receiving inspiration. So now, you now know that I live here. So you keep a book. When you wake up in the night, you write quick. Because you know this is not you thinking. This is traffic. Traffic is passing through your mind. Traffic. And you write them. And you wake up every day with inspiration. Because you are a businessman, you need it. And some of you, you come to a level where you enter favor so much that you, you, are, you are careful not to say what you need. Because the moment you mention it, people can't sleep. They bring to you. So now you don't, you don't say what you want. Because if you say it, you have 20. People are just seeking what you want so that they can give you. It's a realm. And everybody can press into those realms. If we will find it in the Bible. He said in Isaiah 34 verse 16, Search ye out of the book of the law and read. He said none of these things will fail. He said the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. His spirit has gathered it. You want to be upgraded. You want to occasion the system that upgrade. You must study. Most of you will need to go back to your library and dust your books. Because there are things you need to access. In order to enter certain dimensions number three you want to provoke upgrade you must learn to connect to men that carry superior dimensions it's not everything that comes from heaven there are things that men carry on it and god designed it that way so that all of us will be humble there are many things you pray to god about he will direct you to another man that thing you are looking for left heaven two thousand years ago is on it and i've been moving it from one man to another if you need it connect to the man that has it and receive it so that you will learn to be humble because in this kingdom we depend on ourselves that's why we are part of the body of christ and so you want to be upgraded anything you lack that you don't have find out who has it in the body of christ honor that grace and receive it i'm not saying buy it i'm not saying buy it i'm saying what honor it and receive it because it's a system of transfer of grace without every contradiction hebrews 7 7 the less is blessed of the better there are people who carry what we have been praying for for five years what we have been praying for for 10 years and God is just watching every time you pray you go and sleep you see a vision of that person if you like don't honor it you will not have it in Hebrews 6 12 it says follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise so if anybody has obtained if you want to receive you must find them and collect it because it's not in heaven it's now on earth but some of us cannot be upgraded because we are too proud that's why I told us if we are looking for upgrade even our value systems will change some of you, what is stopping you from upgrade is pride. And the way God wants to humble your pride is by making you get what you think only God can give you from another person. So that in humility, that thing will come to you, but you have upgraded by gaining virtue. <laughs> Glory to God. Read your Bible. Second Kings 3, 11. They said Elisha was the man that poured water on the hands of Elijah. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 2 and 2 chapter 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 he said the things you receive from me it's not from God 
be strong in the grace that is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Timothy 2, 1 and 2. So he is not telling him not to have a relationship with God. Glory to God. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He said, and also the things that you have received from me. So there are things God gives you directly. There are others God gives you through men. He said, the same you too commit to faithful men who shall be able to give others. So there are things you receive from God. There are things you receive from other men. You don't worship them, but you honor them so that those things can be transferred to you. Most of us are looking for dimensions, but we have despised the vessels that carry them. And that's why we are praying. We are not seeing it. Look at our generation, for example. You find young men open the Bible and talk as if they were there when the Bible was written. But when it comes to manifestation, they become as helpless as unbelievers. The guy talks about healing. You are wondering whether he was there. He was the one who propagated the doctrine of healing. But he finishes that powerful sermon. One headache is not healed. Everybody who came blind goes blind. The deaf go back deaf. The cripple go back. And you are wondering what is going on. And then you see another person who doesn't know much. He just comes and says, God accepts me. God is faithful. Right now, every blind eye open. And then you are seeing the testimony you are asking. Is it true? They are, were they sick? Are you sure these people are sick? You are seeing people drop crutches. You are even waiting for atmosphere. Atmosphere has not charged. But supernatural is happening. Deaf ears open. Blind eyes see. People are lifting wheelchairs, crutches. And you are saying, what's going on here? They carry it. You don't carry it. And many, it's a system of upgrade in the spirit. Our generation is arrogant. That's why we are not seeing many things. I started beseeching God for the miraculous. Because I saw that men are not interested in, in too many explanations. They are looking for answers to real problems. And so I told myself, I'm tired of this ministry of talking. Men even know you now as a custodian of mystery. I said, me too, I want to solve problems. Problems that prove that God is real. And God told me, all the things you are looking for, most of them people already carry it. If you honor the grace, you will receive it. And I began to listen to their messages. That's the first way God humbles you. I sat down to hear what they know. And as I listened to what they know and meditated on those things and prayed with them, because most of these men, you can't even meet them. Suddenly I go out and what works with those men began to work with me. And I'm not talking something happening in my congregation. I'm talking traveling every week and seeing the same thing happening. Every week, different nations, different locations. You know that this one is something beyond you. But it didn't happen until I recognized that. Because if you don't see that God can do it in another, how will he do it with you? times when God wants to humble you, he will humble you by connecting you to those who carry it. Either by listening to their messages or serving them or honoring what they carry. And then you see that that prayer you have been praying will now be answered. Because now your heart is ready to carry that grace. Upgrade. You must connect to certain people for certain dimensions of upgrade. Number four, faithful service. You want to enjoy upgrade, you must serve. A man who does not serve can never lead. This deception of wanting to be the next voice in Ghana, whereas you have not served any voice, you are joking. This deception of being the next prophet from Ghana, and you have not served anybody, you are joking. Because God will prove you by forcing you to serve. You don't like to follow, but you want to be followed. How can you lead when you have not been led? This is the challenge we have, and we are wondering, why is this thing not working? It's working, it's for you that it's not working. If you want to see it work, these are the protocols. It's a man who serves that God promotes. Because if you cannot serve, it's a clear statement that you are proud. Greatness responds to service. Promotion responds to service. Upgrade responds to service. If you are part of those seeking upgrade, better go back and pay attention to the little thing God gave you. And for some of us, our time of test is short. God gave us that assignment for three years. We have been there for two years, eight months. We have just four years to pass the test of faithfulness. As you return, God will put pressure on you. Can't you do this thing well for once? Don't you know that your next level depends on it? And you are wondering what is going on. God is watching. The angels are scoring you. And every time they score, you are below mark. Because you are not faithful. I prophesy over someone. The grace for faithfulness, it will rest upon you from this meeting. It's not everything that begins and ends with laying on of hands. So. There are certain things that God monitors in your everyday life. Everyday life. Everyday life. He monitors it. To qualify you for the next level finally for you to occasion upgrade in your life you must have a life of giving there are few systems in the spirit that move men faster than giving few in this kingdom if God wants to really move a man fast 
he brings him into the corridor of giving you don't know why satan is fighting the subject of giving because a lot of things are vetted through our giving i'm not talking see these things have been abused by many churches many pastors it doesn't mean you should stop practicing it if you know a pastor is a thief don't give him but don't stop giving because of a pastor who is a thief you need to know the difference it's a kingdom system for promotion it has been like that from time immemorial in genesis 8 22 to 24 when noah gave god said so long as the earth remained seed time and harvest so a man who does not sow can never have harvest harvest is not a miracle harvest is, res is a response to sowing if you have not sown you don't have right for harvest if god allows you harvest it's a miracle but if you want to consistently work in harvest you must consistently sow because harvest is a function of sowing jesus was teaching on judgment but he brought giving into it luke 6 38 he said give it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaking together and running over shall men give to you that means you receive beyond what you gave it's a system of growth of promotion in the spirit the apostles taught it second corinthians 9 from verse 6 to 11 he said, him that sweats sparingly also shall reap sparingly. He that sweats bountifully shall reap bountifully. And you see him, he began to show. Where I got so concerned was from verse 7 and 8. You were giving. You didn't talk to God. But suddenly God came into the equation. He said, and God is able to make all grace. Does that mean God is not able to? If you didn't give, yes. That's why many, many people don't know. You know the Bible told us some things. He said in Ephesians 3.20, He said, God is able only when you put the power at work in you to walk so there are many people that god is in them but god is not able look at the scripture he said now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ask or think according to what the power at work in you that means if the power in you is not working god will not be able this is another occasion in second corinthians 9 8 god is able to cause all grace to abound only to those who give bountifully that's why many people are wondering is god biased he's not biased it's a system if you don't do it you don't qualify for certain things and i will show you why this is not you trying to bribe god this is you proving to god that you are mature enough for certain dimensions you know why it's because of what giving represents if you study your bible there are six basic things giving represent number one giving represents honor proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 it says honor the lord with your substance so a man who gives is a man of honor number two giving represents love for god matthew 6 21 where a man's treasure is so he said dear also his heart shall be so a man who does not give is not a man of love he doesn't love god a man who does not give does not honor god this is why god loves givers because it's not about what you are giving god has already blessed us but for you to qualify for certain dimension you must show him that you are mature and one of the ways to show your maturity is in your giving it means you honor god it means you love god first kings 3 verse 3 and 4 he said and solomon loved the lord and gave so when a man gives, he shows God, God, because that's how God thinks. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So if you don't give, you can't prove to God that you have, not, you have not understood love. And most of the things God wants to do through you, you will need love to operate them. Most of the things God wants to do through you, you must be a man of, of honor to be able to do them. That's why God is interested in giving. It's not about the money. It's about qualifying for dimensions. So when people tell you, oh, all this giving, 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 pastors want to take money, they are robbing you. Please, that's why I told you, if you think a pastor is a thief, don't give him. Give where you believe in, but by all means, keep giving. It proves that you have honor. It proves that you know love. And that's not all. Giving is also worship in the eyes of God. You are the one who thinks worship is singing, and singing a sorrowful song. In Genesis 22 verse 5, when Abraham was going to offer Isaac, he said, I'm going up with the Lord to worship. So one of the ways God vets the quality of your worship is the quality of your giving. When you give, it shows that you worship God. And that is not all. Giving also is a testimony of faith. You can't say you believe in God. You can't tell God, I don't believe in my salary. And you are not able to sow. Every time we put our seed on the altar, every time we give to the cause of the gospel, every time we give to the orphans, every time we give to the helpless, we are telling God we believe that is our supplier. We believe it's our sufficiency. Because every act of giving is an act of faith. Hebrews 11:19. Look at what the Bible said concerning Abraham. When Abraham gave his son, the testimony in the New Testament is said, 11, 19. God was judging it not just as worship, but also as faith. He said, Abraham accounted that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he was received in the figure. 
So Abraham's giving was a testimony that I believe God was the one that blessed me in the first place. So as I'm giving now, I am making a statement that I won't be stranded. I trust God. So if you are trusting God for upgrade, you must become a giver. If you don't have that practice, trust me, there are many levels you can't enter. Go and try it with your children. Buy biscuit, give your child, and tell him, give me. You will now understand who a child is. The same biscuit you bought for your child, give me, he will hide it. No, I will not. Because he's a child. But when you meet an adult, and you give him something, you say, give me. You say, oh, all is well, okay. He gives you back. There's no quarrel. I believe you gave me of your own free volition, and I don't have any reason to keep it. So when God is asking for things, it's not because we want to bribe him. It's a shallow mentality to think we want to bribe God. What can we give him? Everything we have, including our life, he gave us. So a man who demands or seeks upgrade, I tell you, that man must become a giver. And finally, giving op opens you up to supernatural dimensions of God. God is able to cause all grace to abound. That's why people who give, if they tell you their testimony, you won't believe it. And that is why those who are real givers, there's nothing you can tell them to stop them. They have too many proofs. Oh, they have too many proofs. They have too many proofs. You know why? There are three things about seeds. Number one, a seed is the only thing on earth that has the power of resurrection outside Jesus Christ. When you bury a seed, that seed dies, but that seed can resurrect. That's the power of a seed. The same way Jesus was sown as a seed and resurrected. When he said, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, he abides alone. He's telling you something about a seed. Though. A seed can die and resurrect. And the second thing about a seed is that when it resurrects, it doesn't resurrect in the measure that it was planted. You plant one seed, that seed resurrects as 1,000 seeds. And you are wondering, I planted one, what happened? Have you not planted maize before? When you planted one maize, is it one seed of maize that resurrected? You see many, many strands come up with several, maize with several seeds. And you are wondering, where did the multiplication come from? It's from the seed. When the seed dies, it can multiply. When the seed dies, it can resurrect. And when the seed also resurrects, it resurrects with different bodies. That's why you can sow one thing and reap another. It's a mystery. So when God tells us to sow and to give, it's because he wants to open us to supernatural dimensions. There are people who are better preachers. There are people who carry better dimensions, but they don't know the secrets for ascension. They don't know the secrets for, for relevance. That's their problem. Are you ready for upgrade? There are laws that cover it. There are laws. There are laws. In the last two years, we have won more than one million souls, the ones we are counting. We can't count testimonies from tumor to deafness to blind eyes to cripples. We can't count. Every day. And the same people who carry this message command the same result from all around the world. How does that happen? Because these truths, they never lie. If you practice, practice it, it will show. I tell you, it will show. And you don't have to be an apostle. So long as you believe in God and believe in his word, this same thing can happen with you. Can we rise up for one minute and pray? Father, I make demand for upgrade. I make demand. This is beyond emotion. I make demand for upgrade tonight. I just came to do introduction. Can we pray for one minute? Am I talking to people who are desperate for an upgrade? <laughs> yeah. ah. There are spiritual realities that facilitate upgrade. Sit down, let me show you some of them. Hmm. 
factors that facilitate upgrade in the spirit number one is encounters I may touch on these things again when I want to preach but now I'm laying foundations <laughs> glory to God when God wants to upgrade a man what he does is that he gives him encounters you know encounters are a spiritual systems that can be likened to a photocopying machine you know there is a typewriter and there is a photocopier when you want to operate using a typewriting machine you have to write everything one by one that will take a long time when God gives you an encounter what it does is that when the light passes what is in the original is replicated on the plain paper and when you look at the two they are identical that's how encounters work so when God wants to upgrade men most of the times what it does is that he gives them encounters because the law of encounter is that what you see is what you become the Bible says, we all with open faces beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord is say we are metamorphosed so the law of encounter is that if you see you become in first John chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 he said what manner of law has the father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God he said it does not yet appear what we shall be like he said but when we shall see him he said we shall be like him so when God wants to upgrade your reality what God does is that he gives you an encounter so that what you see is what you become and when you study your scripture you are going to see that every level of upgrade that men enjoy was a proponent of the encounters they had encounters this is why in this conference most of you we have diverse encounters see there are things you need to see for the lion in you to wake up some of you standing hearing me you are lions but things are frustrating you you are begging from place to place lord who will help me nobody will help you you are the help of your generation but something needs to wake up on your inside some of you who should change Ghana you are looking from one coast to another region to another region hoping somebody will show up and God is saying wait for that encounter when that encounter happens out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water you are not an individual you are a fountain of many waters encounters look at the life of Moses Moses ran away from Pharaoh there was a body genuine body to deliver Israel and he wanted to deliver Israel in hiding how can you deliver Israel in hiding even if you succeed who will take the glory the, the, what is going on is a conquest between light and darkness Israel will be delivered by a mighty hand because it will be a memorial of many generations from that God will take glory for many generations it's not by killing one Egyptian to another Egyptian that's not what God wants to do God wants to demonstrate power because they are not in bondage due to the army of Egypt they are in bondage because they are wise men that represent the gods of Egypt and if Israel will leave Egypt gods will have to go to war so it's a battle that will reveal which kingdom is superior it's not something you want to do in hiding but Moses, Moses couldn't see it because Pharaoh was son God everybody dreaded him and Moses saw himself as a servant at best and so God waited the Bible said in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 he took his father-in-law's sheep to the backside of the mountain to feed them and suddenly he saw a bush burning that was not consumed and that bush has always been there but the guy never paid attention this time around they say I will look aside to see this sight the moment he turned God said take off thy sandals where you are standing is a holy ground you will not know that your life is sacred until you have an encounter he was standing there before the encounter it wasn't the holy ground the moment he turned and God spoke that place became a holy ground even your walls will become sacred if you have encounter where you live will become sacred if you have encounters you look at the life of Abraham God wanted to change the man's story there were many things God will eventually teach him but the precursor of entering those realities was first of all an encounter and so in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 the Bible said God appeared to Abraham and God told him get out of your country get out of your kindred get out of your father's house to the land that I will show you and God began to show him the levels of upgrade that he was going to enjoy you study verse 2 of that scripture and you see six dimensions of upgrade that Abraham came into he said I will make thee a great nation how can a man become a nation it's called upgrade an individual can become a nation it's called upgrade most of you sitting here you think you belong to a family and you think you are one person but when God sees you from heaven he's seen a nation there are most of you sitting here when God sees you he's seen a system 
The reason you can't see it is that you've not had the encounter that can duplicate that reality. The day encounter comes, you will stop seeing yourself as an individual. You will start seeing yourself as a nation. I will make thee a great nation. He said, I will bless thee and I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Four things already outlined. Next verse. This is God talking to a man. Only encounter can make this man hear this kind of thing. And you can't think this until you have an encounter. It's impossible for a man to suddenly begin to see himself as a nation. That's why I told you upgrade brings transformation. It makes you think differently. So if Abraham leaves this place and sees himself as an individual, he means he's foolish. The moment he left this encounter, he started seeing himself as a nation. Why would he even have the audacity to leave his country? Except as this encounter told him, him too is a country. Him too is a nation. And the guy walked out from that day with a superior mentality. When Lot was taken in captivity, Abraham stood up. He was going to fight four kings. He didn't solicit the help of anybody. The Bible said in Genesis 14, verse 14 to 18, that Abraham carried 318 trained servants from his house. And he said, Abraham divided himself among them. And Abraham went to war against four nations. Is that not stupidity? It would be stupidity if he didn't have this encounter. Because Abraham knows that now I am a nation. So when he carried 318 men, the Bible said he divided himself. You know what the guy did? He made 319 Abrahams. And so those 319 men that were going to war were not individuals. They were 319 nations. That was why that battle had no casualty. So Abraham was fighting four nations with 319 nations because he divided himself among them. When he conquered that battle, the king of Sodom wanted to give him the spoils of war. He said, I lift my hand to heaven. I will not take a light check from you. Let you, you say you made Abraham rich. Who can talk like that? Only a man who has had an encounter can speak like that. I will bless you. He said, indeed shall all the nations of the earth. So even the king that thought he wanted to bless him is blessed because of him. Only encounter can make you think like that. It's called upgrade. It brings you to superior realm of existence. And when these things happen, it shows. Even the great apostle Paul was made by encounters. This guy was a tormentor of the church, a murderer, a wicked man, but he was on his way to Damascus. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 from verse 5 to 6. Suddenly, he saw a light in heaven and Jesus spoke to him. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, who are you, Lord? That means you don't need to go to a school of theology to have, to have the power to rule your generation. That is good. It will train you. It will teach you the ways of God. But if you don't have encounters, you will end up a theologian. The guy had no training. Lord, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest, rise up. His life changed from that day. He became the most relevant apostle in his generation because he had an encounter. This guy did not even walk with Jesus in the flesh. But the encounter he had made him so relevant that even the people that walk with Jesus in the flesh couldn't outdo him in their generation. That means that you didn't see Jesus does not disadvantage you because encounters can make you like the apostles of the first today. Meanwhile, some of us, thank God, we didn't see Jesus in the flesh because if we were there, we may be the ones putting the name. <laughs> you know, there are people who say they wish they were in the days of Jesus. If you were there, maybe you will be Judas. Thank God you are not there. God knows why you are not there. He put you here now so that you have an encounter. He said, blessed are those who have not seen him yet believe. Encounters. And from there, God sent him back to the man he ran from. And when Moses returned, Exodus 7 verse 1, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. What changed the, 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 the fearful guy who took off from Egypt to become a god to Pharaoh? Encounters. And when Moses came back, he went to the court of Pharaoh. Let my people go that they may serve me. Even Pharaoh knew the meaning of that language. He said, by who? Whose authority will you, will you give me this instruction? He said, the god of the Hebrew have sent me. And he said, who is your god? And Moses understood what Pharaoh was looking for was not English. It was not Aramaic. It was not explanation. It was power. It was conquest. The moment he asked that question, battle began rods began to go down and the rod of moses swallowed the one of the egyptian that is what that is who the god of the hebrew is the god of the hebrew is the ruler of the universe and his people cannot be in captivity he will not think like that you don't dare pharaoh unless you have an encounter and from there dimensions to dimensions dimensions to dimension a point came moses stepped out even the sea fled the red sea was parted their clothes did not get weary their shoe grew with them a point came when they wanted to defy Moses. He said, except I'm not called of God. Let the earth open her mouth. Who told you the earth has mouth? Where did you read it from? What book? 
Where did you read it? Who told you they ate? That is to tell you when Moses was on that mountain, he was hearing God was saying what God was saying, and he was seeing other things that God was not saying. Hope you know that it was from those encounters that Moses sat down and said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There was no story that God narrated creation to him. But when you have encounters, you are hearing what God is saying and you are seeing other things around. So when Moses was there, Moses was seeing in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered upon the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Those things were not told, they were seen. So when Moses come back, is that a man? That man has been altered into another being because he saw things that no man do. It was from the strength of that encounter that he became a prince of Zion. See, when you have encounters, your life will change. Oh, you don't know what encounters do to men. The man was walking like a colossus among men. The point came when Moses was about to die. He said, let all the children of Israel gather around me. I want to bless you. You are not a father in Egypt, in Israel. You are not part, you are not from the descendant of Abraham. You are a Levite. How can you bless the whole of Israel? That encounter had made him a prince. And when he stood, he said, I saw the Lord descending from the mountains of Paran, the Holy One, because the encounter gave him authority. And when Moses was blessing them, the ones that were cursed, he reversed it. Reuben was cursed. Moses looked at him and said, let Reuben live and not die. And let his men not be few. Because where he entered made him a prince. That is how men are upgraded. If you don't have encounters, you can't be upgraded. You will remain what you are and your destiny will be messed up. This is why men who understand how things work, they fight for encounters. Encounters can change your possibility. A servant can become a prince. A slave can become a prime minister. An ordinary man can become a father of many nations. So when we talk upgrade, we are not trying to, to fascinate people. We are not trying to make people excited. There are realities that make these things happen. I'm telling you, you can walk into this hall as a hopeless man. There is a realm that can open. There is a sight you can see. There is a word you can hear. And you will walk out of this realm as the most relevant person in Takuradi. It's about encounters. Let nobody deceive you that you are hopeless. The reason you are the way you are is because you have not seen what you need to see. You have not heard what you need to hear. Did you not read about Samuel, a young boy? He was not even relevant in the scheme of things. He was sleeping in the church. But suddenly the Bible said God called unto him. Samuel, Samuel. First Samuel chapter 3 from verse 1 to 20. And the guy thought it was Eli because he didn't even know about God. He went to Eli. Master, you called me. He said, no, I didn't. Three times. Eli now the son God wanted to encounter the boy. He said, when next you hear that voice, say your servant is listening, speak Lord. And the moment that happened, his life changed. If you read verse 20 of that scripture, the Bible said from Dan to Beersheba, he said the whole nation knew that God has exalted Samuel as a prophet. And he said from that day, not one of his words fell to the ground. Because an encounter happened. And that, that Samuel kept growing from authority to authority because of many, many more encounters. Because verse 21 of that scripture said, the Lord appeared again to Samuel in Shiloh. He said the Lord appeared to Samuel by the word of the Lord. It's not, it's not emotion. Listen, listen. What you came to this conference for, it's not excitement. It's to find out what works and get it. Oh, and if you get it, how your life will change. The difference will be like night and day. Encounters. 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 He made Abraham. He made Moses. He made Samuel. It's prophetic words. Prophetic words. <laughs> you know, we are spiritual people. We need to know the things that give us spiritual advantage. When God wants to change the story of a man, most times, because not everybody has systems of blessing around them. There are people that their parents are dead. There are people that don't even have any spiritual person to teach them the word of God or to guide them. So there's no physical structure of blessing around them. There are even people that don't have access to the word of God. So what God does is that when he wants to upgrade people, most times he sends a prophetic word, sometimes directly to them, and sometimes to the environment so that when you come into that place where the prophetic word has been sent you will ride by that prophetic word that's how god walked did you read second kings chapter six and seven a city was besieged women were eating their children the king was hopeless that means the structures that men know government failed it was so bad that women began to eat you that's the highest level of unconditional love you can never find when mothers begin to eat their children, 
know that the situation is truly bad but that was the situation in this territory but guess what happened they sent to a prophet and the prophet came casually as if it was nothing in second Kings 7 verse 1 he said by this time tomorrow he said a cup of flour will be sold for one shekel and he said two cups of barley shall be sold for one shekel the prime minister looked at him and said I know God and I know God enough to know that there's such a thing called the window of heaven he said but even if the window of heaven opens this thing will not happen and the prophet looked at him and said you will see it you will not partake of it now hope you know that there were many people in that city who didn't have encounters there were many people in that city who were not blessed but the prophetic word came to the territory and the moment the prophetic word came what God did to bring resources affected everybody he used four lepers the excellency of the prophetic word is that it can turn any situation around and it can alter the possibility of anybody without regard to time I read Exodus 37 and I was so humbled from that day I told myself if I hear anybody speak and I know this is God talking and we all know it you know what happened the guy was carried to a valley of dry bones you know when 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 bones are dry that is hopelessness in hopelessness that is the most hopeless of hopeless situations if a man dies he's already hopeless enough if a man dies and then he decays you know that case is, is, is don't try don't attempt to do anything now a man doesn't just decay he decays until he dries up and what is left is bones and the bones are not even connected the bones are scattered the skull is outside the limbs are on the other side the hand is in another location before you even gather the bones together it will be hopeless now when the bones were scattering some became powdery air took them away so there's no way you can think anything can happen but God shows up with the prophetic word he said can these bones live the guy assessed it and knew that this is impossible he said go lead down knowest and God said I show you a technology there is a technology that can alter even hopeless situation he said prophesy to the bones don't think about what will happen this is the way of the spirit you know he said as thou knowest not how the bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child prophesy to the bones and the prophet said I prophesied as I was commanded suddenly he said bones began to join to bone so bones to have intelligence so you don't intelligence is not only a function of the brain the brain had decayed but the bones knew how to connect to bones the leg found the waist the waist found the neck the neck found the head and there was a great sound after a while bones assembled and bones did not just assemble the powdery particles that were scattered the air brought them back do you know that some of those powders travel to different nations part of the powder went to Liberia part of it went to Congo part of it went to Cameroon but the air too got intelligent and gathered the whole powder together and the bones were formed and that was not all suddenly the decomposed flesh a reverse reaction began to take place and flesh began to appear and the flesh appeared and they became like dead men and God said the work is not yet done because the prophetic word are in levels when dead men were on the ground God looked at him, prophesied to the east wind, and the guy prophesied, and suddenly the wind entered, and a body of men suddenly rose up. If they rose up as men, that would have been beautiful. But when they rose up, they rose up as an exceeding great army. That's how the prophetic word works. When the prophetic word meets you, it doesn't just restore you. See, when we talk about restoration, it's not that you'll come back to the level where you want to. Oh, I lost a child, so God gives me a child back. I lost money, God gives me money back. That is not restoration, that is replacement. When we talk about restoration, I lost a child, God gave me six children. I lost a thousand cities, God gave me a company. That's restoration. When restoration comes, dry bones become an exceeding great army. I prophesy over someone. Whatever you need to shift to the next level, in the name of Jesus the Lord, receive it now. When the prophetic word comes in your direction dry bones can become an exceeding great army that's how god lifts men that's how god upgrades men how does god upgrade men sit down is by giving them access to secrets revelational wisdom information you can never be upgraded except as god exposes you to secrets and god allows you to learn wisdom and gives you strategic information your upgrade is a function of how much you have as touching information, revelation, and secrets. 
the moment a man begins to get access to superior information his life begins to change some of you are here today well dressed because you are educated your colleagues who were your mates 20 years ago who are not educated they don't even have regard for appearing well they talk carelessly because information has set you apart the quality of information you have is the quality of life you live a man's existence is a function of the information at his disposal and then you move from information to revelation you move from revelation to secret wisdom all of these things are channels god gives men some of you god want to wanted to bring you to a point where he can entrust you to nation but he began first of all by taking you through the university he needed your mind to be refined so what you need for destiny may not be physics it may not be chemistry it may not be mathematics you may never have need for 2x plus 5y is equal to 3 proof x you may never need it but the process of thinking through that thing sharpened your mind and it prepared your mind to handle responsibility at superior levels that's why god insisted you must pass exam that's why god insisted you must be educated it is not about the certificate it's about the upgraded mentality it's called upgrade this is why many people who despise knowledge are wasted a man who must be upgraded must have re 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 respect for information he must have respect for revelation he must have respect for secrets our outcomes are a product of the secrets that are it's in our disposal you don't have secrets you can be you can never amount to anything the Deuteronomy 29 29 said the secret things belong to god he said but the things that are revealed they belong to us and to our children forever and when they are revealed they become wisdom and those wisdom upgrade our possibilities when god wants to upgrade a man or a people what he does is that he bless them oh how beautiful it is when you see a blessed man that's when you discover there is a realm superior to natural laws a blessed man can show up in a place where nothing is working he didn't do anything different but his story is different and you are wondering what did you do different nothing i'm blessed that's how god designed this realm did you not read when the man was created in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 the first thing god did for the man was to bless him he wanted the man to dominate the whole earth he didn't carry him to a school first he blessed him first that's why we keep telling people people think church is not relevant they tell you go and study this go and study that if you are not blessed you'll be shocked i've seen people with first class who are frustrated i've seen people with phd who are frustrated and be careful before you point hands at people you don't know what is powering them we are very quick to do that in africa go to china go to india go to america they are doing well without god what, do you know what they are working with you are in the kingdom there is a principle for the kingdom that powers men it's called the blessing he said be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion how he blessed them before you are fruitful you must be blessed before you replenish you must be blessed before you subdue you must be blessed before you have dominion you must be blessed it's a system of upgrading men when god wants to change a man's story he blesses him even in the encounter of abraham the first thing god said is that i will bless you if i don't bless you i can't make you when god makes men he makes them by blessing them and so what upgrades what facilitate upgrades is the blessing that is why you have to be careful anything that blesses men hold it sacred from the ministers of God, God puts over your life, to your parents, to the word of God. Anything that blesses you, hold it sacred. It can change your life. When the devil wants to destroy you, he will make you despise the sources of blessing in your life. That's why many curse their parents. A wicked and barbaric generation that insult their fathers. That's why we are truncated from blessings. Many fight spiritual authorities that God instituted to bless them many fight even the word of god scriptures that are meant to bless and they despise everything that should bless them and they wonder why they are not upgraded because the blessing does not just happen there is a system that confesses it and everybody who is wise and desires upgrade must master how to receive blessing go and look at the sons the children of israel they knew how this thing worked these guys were skillful they were hard working but they never joked with the blessing from abraham before they died they make sure they transfer the blessing because that was the secret of their strength the blessing abraham put the blessing on isaac genesis 25 verse 5 to 6 he said the sons of the concubine he gave them gifts and sent them away but isaac that was the child of promise he gave him the blessing that's what you need and when isaac wanted to die genesis 27 he called his son say get me a savory venison and i will bless you 
and the guy went although of course Esau was deceived by Jacob and Jacob showed up and he gave him the blessing verse 5 and 6 oh you, you need to hear the words that this man was speaking you know they know something I bless you with corn and wine you don't have any corn what are you talking about I bless you with the dew of heaven you are not you don't do you are not a geologist you are not a you, what do you know about atmosphere it is not about wine it's not about corn it's not about weather it's about the blessing and they knew what they were putting on this man Jacob Isaac will go and dig where the where will be collected Genesis 26 from verse 1 to 26 he won't fight he leaves the location and go to another place and dig another where the one they collected dried up they came to him again the new one he dug water came out they fought him he left them he went and dug another one after a while the people knew that this water is not about location it's about who is digging it's about who is digging because the guy doesn't fight he keeps moving and he keeps finding water why are we struggling the point came the king came to him and said please leave us you are bigger than us how can a man be bigger than a nation is the blessing and Isaac also gave the blessing to Jacob Laban deceived and cheated Jacob ten times but Jacob will never finish because the blessing made him to become an everlasting fountain a point came Laban confessed with his mouth Genesis 27 29 Genesis 30 27 he said I have come to understand by divination the Lord bless me because of you I'm not blessed because I'm a smart header I am blessed because your presence is here the blessing can change your life did you read what Joseph told Judah in Genesis 49 verse 9 he said the scepter shall not depart from Judah neither shall the Lord give her from in between his feet until she look come the guy made him a king by talking the blessing can make you a king the blessing can make you resourceful the blessing can make you prosperous and so when God wants to upgrade men in addition to encounters he blesses them this is the story of the patriarchs when you read the Bible you are going to see why these men defied circumstances is because of what they carried blessings